Hi, I'm Diana, the artist behind My McDoodles. Welcome to my channel. Hi, welcome back. This week we'll be painting this pretty flamingo in Procreate with digital watercolors. For this project, I'll be using the wonderful watercolors brush set that's available in my Etsy shop. You can use whatever brushes you prefer. If you would like to use a similar brush that's built into Procreate, I would suggest using this brush in the calligraphy section called Blotchy, and that'll give you kind of like a watercolor feel. Or of course, you can use whatever your favorite brushes are. They don't have to be watercolors. I'll be painting on this watercolor paper, which is included in the wonderful watercolors bundle. Um, so this is a special Procreate document that you can paint right into and it'll make it look more like real watercolors as far as adding like the texture and really bringing a lot of depth to your paint strokes. This canvas is 4,000 by 5,000 pixels, which is plenty large enough for any type of project I would use this for. You can make your canvas whatever size you choose, but if you're working in the Wonderful Watercolors kit, then that's the size that this watercolor paper document is. Before I start drawing any particular object or animal, I always like to pull up some reference images and kind of take a look to make sure I get the shapes down and don't leave out any major details that distinguish that object or animal as being like a flamingo or whatever um, animal you choose. So I just pull up a window in Safari and you can put it next to your Procreate document just by sliding it over there and then you have like kind of like a split screen and just do a Google search for a flamingo. You can look through and see there's so many different flamingos to use for reference images and I think flamingos are really fun because of like that curvy neck like they can make so many different fun shapes and like really interesting designs and you can make it like as real or as whimsical as you like. Um, I like the ones where the neck looks like super curvy so I'm going to look for an image like that to base my drawing off of. Go through and find one that you like or you can follow along with the image that I choose and I'll show you how I break it down into basic shapes to get the general like structure of any object or animal down before I start painting. So I think this one looks pretty cute. I like how its neck is like super curvy and then its um, feathers and everything look really like fluffy and pretty and just has a nice shape to it. So if I was drawing this with real materials, I would just grab like a piece of paper and just start sketching it out like this and just do like the general shapes to get the structure down and then go over it another time to get a more refined sketch. And then I literally just like scribble over the back of the paper with my pencil and then I can trace it onto my watercolor paper that way. Or you could use tracing paper, um, but that just cuts down an extra step of having to trace it again onto tracing paper. In any case, we're gonna follow the same steps in the digital document. Um, just because you're working digitally doesn't mean you shouldn't create like a base sketch and follow the same type of process that you would as if you were working with real materials. So I'm gonna grab this black um, color and I like to use the sketching pencil that's included with Procreate called Derwent. Not sure if I'm saying that right, but that's my favorite sketching pencil that's included with the app. So I use that just to kind of like lay out the basic shapes for the flamingo, and then we'll start to, to refine it and paint it in. So this is my first pass through with a really rough sketch. The things that I want to highlight um, as far as it being distinguishable for a flamingo is this beak that has like the black at the tip. So just like down here. And then all of this, all the way up through here is going to remain white. And, um, and its eye is included like up in here in this white area. So I'm just gonna make sure I leave all of that blank. And then its head, we can just draw like an oval and then just do like the curvy neck. Um, the body is like this really rounded shape with kind of like, kind of like a flat bottom. And then these tail feathers up point down and then these really long legs um, that are just like really like awkward looking and like really um, bendy. So I just wanted to kind of like highlight that. And then I'll put in like some feathers like for the wing. 
um, there. So then once you have your base sketched down, you can go through and refine it to make it look um, more like a flamingo and less like a, a stick drawing. But this helps you get like the basic structure down so that you can um, at least have the elements that are important laid out here. So my sketches are always like super messy. Like it, you can't really tell here, but it always starts out like so crazy looking and like really, really messy. So don't worry if it looks really bad at first. Um, it's just a sketch. It's supposed to like not be like your final product. So it's okay if it's super messy. Okay, so I think I'm gonna do something like that and then um, go over this to clean it up a little bit in a new layer and then turn down the opacity on that first like super messy sketch and then just go through and refine it into a neater sketch. Um, and I also would normally work in portrait mode. It's hard to film in that, um, that setup because the iPad doesn't fit into the frame nicely. So that's why my iPad's sideways. Um, so I was going to draw it like this, but I decided ultimately just to swivel my canvas and draw it in portrait mode. Um, so sorry if it's kind of hard to see or if we'll have to like zoom in different areas of the screen at different times because it doesn't all fit into the frame. Um, anyway, I made a new layer on top of my base layer and I'm just gonna go through and refine my sketch in that layer and just make it as simple and clean as possible so that I can just easily paint the uh, strokes in without too much like uh, confusing stuff going on. So that'll do it for my sketch. It's really not necessary to go in here and like try to draw in these little like spindly legs because when you do it with your paintbrush, it's going to just naturally make a thicker stroke. So I kind of just like piece them in and put where like the little joint is. And then I know um, to make it kind of look knobby there with the brush and stuff like that. Um, it's also not necessary to, to be like shading things in or coloring. Um, so I just left the beak white, but I know I'm gonna paint it black um, and things like that. So this is my refined sketch. You can see it's pretty close to the original. Um, I just made the body a little bit fluffier and added like a little bit of um, jaggedy strokes where I know I wanna make it look like feathery and um, just general little changes like that. So now I'll use this new sketch as my um, base to paint over top of and just make it really light and Hope you guys can still see it. Maybe I'll make it a little bit darker just so you can see it. Um, I set it to multiply. And then I can um, paint underneath of it. And I just want it to be pretty light so I can make sure the paint strokes that I'm putting on the paper um, define the edges pretty well. Sometimes this is distracting to me. And when I turn it off, it doesn't look exactly like I thought it would. So I just try to make it as light as possible. So I'm gonna grab my um, watercolor brush from the set that I mentioned available on Etsy. Um, and it's the heavy brush, so it'll put on a pretty thick um, layer of color there. And I'll just grab like a light pink. This palette's also available on Etsy. If you go over to mymcdoodles.com, it'll take you to my Etsy shop. And you can check out the brushes and the palettes I have available there, or go on to dianamcdermot.com and check out the free ones I have available for you guys as well. So I kind of want like a bright, brighter pink and just take it down a little bit. And then I just want to go through and paint it in like really kind of, kind of messy. Um, it doesn't matter if there's like white gaps and stuff because I want it to look like real watercolors and that's what would happen in real life. So I just wanted to have kind of like a rough edge. Um, the thing I'm focusing on is not lifting my pen through the whole shape if possible. Um, and that will make it go on as like one single glaze and then I can do multiple layers to make several glazes. If you need to lift your pen, it's okay. Like obviously I'm not gonna be able to go all the way down there without lifting it. So I try to like plan ahead where I'm gonna lift it. 
and it's okay if there's like little white gaps. Um, it's okay if it overlaps a little bit. So I plan ahead for that. And as much as possible, I try not to lift my pen. So I'm gonna zoom back out so that I don't have to lift it as much and to see if I can do the rest of it in one pass. And I just try to keep this super messy and not worry too much about getting like the perfect shape or um, drawing in like individual feathers or anything like that. Like that's just not necessary. Any areas where it overlapped like here, if you don't like it, you could just blend it out with the smudge tool. You can hold it down and it'll grab the same brush that you were using for painting. Or if you're using my set, you could use this watercolor blender. Um, I'm gonna just smudge it around a tiny bit just to kind of blend that together a little bit before adding my second glaze layer. So it doesn't matter if there's like a little bit of um, darkness. I don't mind that because that happens in real life too. So I'm gonna go through in a new layer on top of my first layer with the same color, same brush, and just go through again and add in little bits here and there to um, just like you would do in real life with your watercolors, just to kind of like enhance different areas and give it a little bit more interest and texture. And you can see how quickly this comes together with these brushes. I really enjoyed using them because I can make my artwork so much faster. Um, especially if you're painting in like a loose watercolor style. It's really easy to make like really cute artwork that looks really pretty um, and it's way faster. So I don't like that area there. Any areas you see where you're kind of like, eh, you just go ahead and blend it out. Um, you, can, you can use the blender tool like I mentioned. Um, if you turn on alpha lock, it won't blend that well. That's just a side note because it's a glaze. It's like a, it's not a totally opaque brush or paint. So it won't really blend that well. So you need to keep that off. But if you want to be able to, to blend within the board borders of your paint, just tap it and push select. And then it won't go beyond the area you selected, but it'll still blend within there a little better than if you turned on alpha lock. And that looks better. It just was like really obvious in that area. So if you see any problem spots like that, you can just go through and kind of blend it out, but don't blend it in too much because then it starts to lose that like really pretty texture that it, it has um, built into the brushes and that helps it look like real watercolors. You don't want to end up with just like a completely blurry design. Okay, so I'll go through and undo the beak and the legs in the same way. I'm gonna use the same brush and just grab black for the beak and um, a similar color for the legs, probably this darker color here. When you need to siphon up a particular color, you want to turn off your texture layer here so that you can grab like the true color there. You can see when this texture paper is turned on, the colors will be a little bit more vibrant and a little bit darker. So it won't pick up the, um, the true color. And if you siphon it up with that texture layer turned on, the color that you'll get will be a little bit darker. It's really subtle, it's kind of hard to tell, but it'll be a little darker than the original one. Um, if you chose it without that texture layer turned on. Okay, so that pretty much is it. I'm gonna turn off my sketch layer and just kind of like take a look, see if there's any areas that need like a little more detail. Um, I, I might go through with a little brush and just add in a little bit here and there. And we need to add in some water. So in the very back layer here, I'm gonna go for like a light blue. And you can pick colors that are a little more pale because they'll appear darker with this texture layer turned on. And then just do like a little kind of pool of water here. You can just add in some final little details, um, little, a few little feathers here and there. You don't really need to go through and do the whole thing. Just add like a couple that are sticking out. Um, in a, a few spots and it'll make it look 
like it has a little bit more detail without going all crazy and like drawing in each individual feather. So something like that looks um, good to me. Kind of fits like the style I'm going for here. And then the last thing I like to do is just group up all of my elements into their own little folder so it's easy to move this little guy around. And I'm just gonna get him centered onto the page. So I have magnetics and snapping turned on and maxed out. Um, the sliders are all the way to the right, so then it'll snap pretty easily uh, right into the center of the canvas there. And you could use this for like a cute little greeting card. Um, you could print it out on real watercolor paper, which is something I like to do when I have digital art. Um, it prints really well. If you just run a piece of regular watercolor paper through your printer, you can kind of achieve the same look um, without this texture layer on, of course. You can turn that off and run it through your printer and make it look like it was a, a painted little card without having to actually sit there and paint a whole bunch of them. I hope this tutorial was fun for you. If you paint this little flamingo, I'd love to see yours. So if you post it on Instagram, be sure to tag me at mymcdoodles so I can check out your flamingos. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like. Comment below with your favorite animal to draw or suggestions for future videos. I always like to hear what you would be interested in so I can keep creating content that's actually helpful and fun for you guys. Be sure to subscribe before you go so you don't miss out on the next fun tutorial. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time.